Right. The kink demand curve is a theory that sets out to explain price rigidity. It is based on the assumption that all firms within an oligopoly are interdependent with each other. That is, they are very sensitive to the uh, behaviors and actions of one another. It also explains why prices uh, by firms not only do not want to change price, they don't need to change their price. That is, it shows complete price rigidity within an oligopolistic market. Now we start by the diagram that we're all by now very familiar with, the x and y axis showing the price on the y axis and the quantity on the x axis. Now we know that firms within an oligopoly will be operating at a price of, say, P1. At this stage, they'll be highly reluctant to operate at a price at all above the agreed price, well, not the agreed, but the set price within the oligopoly. That is because you will see that their demand curve slopes a bit away, but it's a very flat slope, that is, it means it's a very elastic uh, demand curve that they face. Any rise in price will be met, you know, a small rise in price will be met by a large fall in demand. This is because other firms within the oligopoly will not raise their price, seeking to instead increase their market share by uh, taking the market share away from the one firm that's to suit the time to raise its price. Now, likewise, we see beneath the set, the, uh, uh, the uh, equilibrium price from the oligopoly, demand curve is very, very steep. That is to say, it's very inelastic. What happens here is that any decision by one oligopolist to reduce its price will be quickly met by all the other oligopolists who are extre extremely reluctant to lose their market share. So a small a, a, a rise in price, excuse me, a, 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 a large decline in price will not result in very large uh, increase in revenue, uh, increase in sales, therefore reducing the revenue to the firm. Now, this perhaps becomes a little bit more clear when we draw in the marginal revenue curve. As we know, with the marginal revenue curve, as you've seen in our past studies, it slopes away at twice the rate that the uh, average revenue curve here, or in this case, the average revenue curve is the demand curve. So we see that it's sloping away twice the rate. Now this gets a little bit interesting here because this is assuming this average revenue curve is falling, yeah, therefore the marginal revenue curve is falling away at this rate. But at this stage, if we looked at the average revenue curve running up here, then the marginal revenue curve would be falling at twice the rate there. We'll call that MC. So, in effect, the marginal revenue curve appears to sort of disappear here for a while while it becomes uh, perfectly vertical. Now, this goes to show you why companies don't need to change their price as well as not wanting to change their price. You see, what occurs here now is because they're profit maximizing firms, they will operate where MC equals MR. And if their MC curve is operating like here, <coughs> they will, their operation will be at Q, Q will rise at P, and that will be where their output is. But let's say they have a rise in marginal cost to MC1. Well, we see here a rise in marginal cost still operates where MC equals MR and price and quantity don't change. And likewise, if their marginal costs were to fall, MC2, likewise, their output and price do not change here. Therefore, we can display or quantify why exactly monopolist markets do not change their price. They don't want to because of the different slope of the average revenue or demand curve, nor do they need to because they can continue to operate where marginal revenue equals marginal cost and without changing output or quantity. Thank you.